He is risen. Three small words that brought the collective pace of humanity to an absolute standstill. He is risen. Three words that shattered prisons. Words that shook the earth's foundations. Words that transformed a sense of utter despair into cries of pure joy and ecstasy. Echoes of history's greatest triumph that still shape our reality. Even today, we're assaulted by constant distraction, countless sources waging war for our attention, yet three words pierce the noise. In our hunger for validation, our desperate pleas for love and attention, three words calm our anxieties. In a universe spinning at breakneck speed, its inhabitants locked in an existential crisis, three words proclaim the purpose of our existence. He is risen. Lay hold of this truth and embrace the peace within. Yesterday, fear reigned in our hearts. Yesterday, we sat in crippling darkness. Yesterday, we suffered abuse and all the accusations of a broken world. But today, our King, our Healer, our Defender is risen. And this reality doesn't merely accompany us on a meaningless journey. This changes everything. For you see, if He is risen, then all other pursuits become secondary. All of our failures become insignificant. All criticisms and condemnations become irrelevant. There is only His word, His mission, and His infinite, unconditional love for you. Because He is risen, we look to tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will stop defining our worth through status and social media. Tomorrow, we will together build an everlasting kingdom. Tomorrow and every day after, we will dance in the radiance of a redeeming Savior who crushed death and set us free. There is nothing that Jesus cannot overcome. We know this because He lives. We know this because He is risen. Good morning, Christ Centered. It's Resurrection Sunday. And this is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're excited today to tell the world that Jesus lives. He is alive and we give glory and honor to God right in this place. Lord, we thank you this morning for initiating your plan to redeem us back into yourself. And we count it a privilege and an honor to worship you this day. Come on, everybody, clap your hands like this right here. For you are worthy of all the glory. That's why we give your name the praise. For you are worthy, oh Lord, so worthy. For you are worthy. Right in this place. Come on, clap your hands. Hey! Father, we worship you today. Today, right here, right in this place. 
Jesus taught this lesson. He says, pray in this manner. Yeah. He says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, the translation there in order for the will of God to be done in the earth. Somebody has to initiate that. So it starts first in us that he will have his way, his will be manifest in us. And as we live in the earth, his will comes alive in the earth. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So our, our job is to release everything to him and to say to him, hey, you have your way in this. Are you, are you seeing what I'm saying? Because oftentimes we try to manipulate and manage and navigate and uh, uh, fix things 
and even in the worst situation, even when we are the ones that messed it up, you got to go to him and say, I need you to have your way in this. I've botched it up once again, but I want to release it to you and ask you to have your way. So we start by first saying, God, we want you to have your way in this place, in this atmosphere. We want that then to happen inside of us, in our lives. And then as we walk throughout the earth, the will of God is manifest among us. We honor you, Jesus. So it's a little simple song that says, have your way, that we're going to offer up to him this morning. When you catch it, I want you to sing it with us. Overflow in this place. Have your way in this place. We want more in this place have your way come on ladies would y'all sing this right here sing overflow yeah in this place uh -huh. and have your way in this place this is our prayer today we want more in this place just have your way Come on, let's sing it again to him. Sing overflow. Overflow. In this place. In this, place this is our heart's desire. Have your way. Yeah. In this place. Uh-huh. Sing, we want more. We yeah. Want more in this place. In this place. Just have your way. Have your way. Uh-huh. Come on, sing this right here. Sing, we can't walk. We can't walk. Yeah. Without you, without you, yeah, we can't talk. Say, we can't talk without you, without you, yeah, and we can't live, we can't live without you, without you. So just have your way, have your yeah. Way. We're gonna stay right there, and I want you to declare it right here. Say, we can't, we can't talk without you. Say, without you. And we can't live, no. We can't live without you. Without you. Have your way. Have your yeah. way. Come on, y'all. We're going to sing it again. We're going to stay right there. Come on, say, we can't we walk. Can't we can't move without you. Without you. And we can't talk, no. We can't We got to get out of our own tail. Without you. And wait for you, yeah. We can't live without you. Without you. So I'm staying here because see what really happens in worship first, let's clear this up. What happens in worship first should be submission. See our challenge is we start lifting up words and lifting up hands before we have submitted our lives. And so what should happen in worship is that there should be submission. I know I got that right because in Exodus chapter 32, I think it is when Moses came to God and he says, hey, I want you to lead us. God finally says, okay, I'll lead you. He says, but I want you to show me your glory is what Moses says to God. And God says to him, wait a minute, you can't look at my glory and live. So we move on to chapter 33 and God says, here's what I'll do. I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover it with my hand. He says, and then I'm going to go by. He says, but when I go by, I'm going to declare my name. Then I'll move my hand and you can see my back because you can't see my glory and live. So here's what happens. The first praise and worship session, God was the worship leader. And so when God goes by, he starts declaring his own name. And when he finishes, the text says that Moses was on his face because what happens in worship, before we say something, we got to submit something. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm preaching already. And so there should be submission in worship because you can't tell me that you are everything to me 
and then you don't give me anything. So I'm staying here to say we can't walk without you and talk without you and live without you because worship starts at the place of submission. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. I'm going to say what you tell me to say. See, that's worship. God told the children of Israel, you can keep your festivals, keep your conferences, because what I want from you is worship. What I want from you is obedience, because obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, what is obedience? Submission. Man, I preached the whole sermon. We can leave now. I'm going to give you the benediction. Because if there's going to be real worship, there has to be submission. And so these kinds of songs remind us that we can't move without it or we shouldn't that we shouldn't be talking about it. I'm going to fix this myself. No, keep your mouth shut and say, you do it, God. You say it. You live it out. You do it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to pay him back. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So who are we to take what's his and try to demonstrate it and execute it? We got to say to him, have your way. That's why I'm lingering here because real worship produces submission. Come on, let's do it again right here, y'all. Y'all ready? Yeah. We can't talk. Come on, walk. Say it. We can't walk without you. Without you. Uh-huh. And we can't talk, no. We can't talk. want you to have your way if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me <laughs> if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me yeah if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me have your way. I'm going to see if I can remember this song they used to sing at Oak Grove Freewood Baptist Church when I was a little boy. It says, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. That's a hymn. It says, I am the potter. Sang this song in almost 50 years. <laughs> I am the clay. I think it says, mold me and make me after thine will. 
after thine own will. Give me something, y'all don't remember? Have thine own way, Lord. I don't remember the last part of the song. A humble and still. I remember right there. But that's a song that just submits us to God. It's songs like this in your meditation time that aligns us. Listen, worship is a spiritual chiropractor when you worship God and not worship. Okay? I think sometimes we worship worship and you know, oh, I've just been worshiping. I've been, but did you worship God while you were worshiping? And so the alignment happens in this time of worship, in your quiet time, in your private time. There's alignment that happens and it's songs like this that turns the light on you. See, when the light of Christ comes up in worship, there should be a light from that worship that shines on us, that tells us some stuff got to be cleaned out. My dad, my dad was saying, oh, let it shine on me. <laughs> let it shine on me. He would say, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me it shine I know this is old stuff but the theology is good right here on me early in the morning sometimes Jesus shine on me let your light from the lighthouse shine on me. Sometimes you just gotta say, have your way. Have your way. Listen, and when he steps in to have his way, we gotta be quiet and be aware of his presence to hear his instruction. And Father, our prayer today is that you speak to us, that you tell us where to go on this, your resurrection Sunday. Tell us what to do, what to say, and we will submit to it and follow it. In Jesus' name. Now listen, on this first Sunday, I want you to get your communion elements and we will partake communion together so what's going to happen is of course we are streaming this to you and so all of our team here will be at home just like we just like you are we are at this moment and we'll take communion together that way so if you would get your elements and we're going to take a moment and lift up this song as we prepare our hearts on this resurrection sunday to partake of the Lord's table, to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. No more excuses will I give, no more for Satan will I live. I'm going to stand for Christ, come what will at me. Whatever task he has for me, I'll give it my fullest ability. I live for him, he died for me, and now I'm free. Come on, let's sing it right here. And I'll see yes. Say yes. yes. Yeah. Jesus Christ can depend on me. I will always, 
And if you wonder why I say yes, I say yes, it's because I love him so much and I guess it's because of the wonderful bond between my Lord and me. Look, I asked Jesus, how much do you love me and such? He stretched his arms and he said, I love you this much. Then he died on Calvary to set me free in response I'm going to lift it up to him and I'll see yeah On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed the bread. He broke the bread and he passed out and said it to his disciples. He said, this is my body that's broken for you. We become like that bread because he whom the Lord takes, he blesses. And he whom the Lord blesses, he breaks. And he whom the Lord breaks, he passes out. And we become bread to the nations. Take ye and eat all of it. In like manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that's shed for you. It is a sign of a new and better covenant. Paul writes that without the shedding of blood, there'll be no remission of sins. So take ye and drink all of it. The Bible says they went out to the hymn out to the garden and they lifted up a hymn and we don't go out to a garden but there's a world out there that can be unfriendly and rough but we are the light in the world and so we have to remember that he died for me and I live for him and now I'm free come on lift it up right here say I'll say yes and I'll say yes Christ can depend on me. Oh, oh, oh. I'll say yeah. I'll say yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He died for me and now I'm free. Good morning, everybody. It's Resurrection Sunday at Christ Center Church, and we are excited to be worshiping the Lord today. Yes, today is an amazing, uh, amazingly important day for the believer. This is the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, um, I want you to like and share. If you haven't right now, would you like and share? I want you to remember that we are, of course, on Facebook Live. We are on YouTube Live right now. So you can invite anybody, everybody to come and worship with Christ Center Church this Easter Sunday morning. Um, as it relates to giving, I think you've already uh, started giving because all the information is in the chat. And so remember, we give because we get the opportunity. We, it's a privilege to be able to align ourselves in every way with what the Lord is doing in the earth. Um, the church is God's movement. Jesus says, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It is God's organization that he established and everything around it is what we call parachurch organizations. So when we partner with other organizations, those are parachurch organizations. But when we give to the house of God, we are doing what God has asked for us to do in that we bring tithe and offering into the storehouse. And I want to thank Christ Center Church for being so faithful. And so all of our giving information is right there. Listen. 
Before I go to the word this morning, I want to take a moment and uh, I want to bring on a special song that our worship and arts department has um, done for you today. Uh, we've been doing this series called Love Reset, and this song connects with it. So we're excited to uh, do it for you. And we got some special guests coming on too to sing with us. I'll be right back. So we've been doing this series that we call Love Reset. And love is a word that's kind of thrown around so much that it can actually become empty. But love has to always be measured against God for God is love. It is love. He loved us so much that he gave, so love gives. Paul goes on to write in uh, the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians that love is patient and kind. And he, he teaches us that regardless of how many things you get right, if you do not have love, you have nothing. So Kirk Franklin wrote this song about love that we'd like to offer this morning. And we're grateful to have under 21 joining with us to sing this song about love. We're bringing generations together around love. So open your heart and receive the message today about love. Let's sing it right here. Sing love. suffers long and it understands. Let's say it again. Love. Love. A word that comes and goes. It's an empty but word at times. Really we use it so much. But, it but do we really know what it really means to love? love That's the question. So glad. I'm so glad your love will stay. Thank you for loving me. Cause I love you. Cause I love you. And you show me. And you show me. Jesus. What it really means. Oh. What it really means to love. Mm -hmm. The nights that I cry, you love me. You love me. When I should have died, you love me. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Mystery to me. Mystery to me. Now I'm glad to see Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What it really means. What it really means. What it really means to love. What it really means. Thank you for showing me. What yeah. it really means to love. Because love is sacrificial. 
And the characteristic of love has to always be measured by God because God is love. It's patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering. It does not keep score. It's not puffed up. Love hangs in there. It's the love that Jesus Christ had for us where he initiated this relationship. Teaching us what love is, Lord. For God so loved that he gave. Jesus loved us that he was obedient to the death on the cross. That's love. Oh, thank you for teaching us, Lord. loving us, Father. Yeah, we are grateful that Jesus has been and still is our example of love and he has taught us and is still showing us what it means to love. Again, I want to say thanks to our worship and arts department for the work that has uh, has to go in to everything that happens. And also uh, thankful again to Under 21, the band, for being a part of this. Um, Under 21 is the brainchild and creative expression of Jay Fly, our drummer. And so, and that's a, also a part of the How Big Is Your Dream Foundation. So we're grateful to partner and to do ministry together. Thanks, thankful for all of our teams that uh, pray and handle administration and tech and music and vocals, everything to make what happens here at Christ Centered happen, but not only just happen, happen in an excellent way. So we're grateful for that. And I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hey, let's go to the word this morning. It's Easter Sunday. Let's see what the word has to tell us today. If you would open your Bible and uh, scroll in your devices to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. I want to start reading this morning at verse 19. We'll read through 22, just a few verses here. John 20, 19 says this. Then... The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you this morning from this thought, resurrection marching orders. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. We thank you for your death on the cross. We thank you for being buried. We thank you for coming out of that tomb with all power. And Lord, we pray today for an impartation of your power, of your grace, of your love into our day-to-day -day functioning lives that we will imitate you. Now, Lord, I pray today that you would think through my mind, speak through my mouth, give me clarity of thought and agility of wit. Allow me to talk in the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. So I remember telling you last year of, uh, at last Easter of how difficult it is um, to preach holiday messages. And I, I can't speak for other, uh, uh, other preachers, but for me, it's a challenge. And I probably put too much um, pressure on myself to do these holiday messages, but I am declaring that I'm making a paradigm shift. 
I'm seeing them in a different way based on the assignment that I have. I, I no longer choose to see these holiday messages as challenges, but I actually see them as opportunities for us, the believer. So he, here it is. For the believer, Christmas and uh, Easter are not to be remembered, not just remembered, okay? Christmas and Easter, those are our big days for Christians and believers. And so it's not just, those days are not just for us to remember, but we should also rekindle is what should be happening. Not remembering, but rekindling, okay? Not only should we tell the stories of Christmas and Easter, but we shouldn't just revisit those stories. Listen, we should reignite something inside of us. That's what's supposed to be happening. So it's not just about just telling the stories and reciting the stories, but we should be resetting our love. So my assignment today is to bring this challenge to us, this opportunity to us to really embrace the day. Because I, I think I did a, a message maybe about four or five years ago for Christmas, I mean, for Easter, that said, um, Jesus is alive. Now what? So it's just like, you know, we come to these big days and, and we have Holy Week and we're excited and, you know, it's Easter. But so what? It, Easter is just another Sunday. If we do not press the reset button for which... Uh, the love of Christ in us came alive through these uh, big events, we should be pressing the reset. Remember, we set it back to zero. We calibrate. We make sure that I have not uh, lessened my love or listen or overloved some things that I shouldn't be. You understand what I'm saying? So these are great days, uh, holidays that we should be resetting, that we should be rekindling, that we should be reigniting. So here's, here's my perspective on these particular holidays. When I look at Christmas, I see love initiated. When I see Good Friday, it was love incarnate meaning it was love actualized. Jesus became love actualized. And on resurrection day, it is love imparted. So this is what I want you to see. That when Jesus came out of the tomb, some things changed. It is like, it is what I like to call um, Jesus changing his business model. That it was first Christ and we were with him or the disciples were with him, Christ with us. When he came out of the tomb and ascended to heaven, then it was Christ in us. And so the model change, it was Jesus going from here and there doing miracles. Then there was the 12 and then he sent out the 70. OK, and so then he started multiplying himself. But when he came out of the tomb, and breathed into his disciples the Holy Spirit. And then we had uh, the Pentecost experience. This is John's. I believe that what we read today is John's account of Pentecost. And then we have Luke's account of Pentecost in Acts. And either way, the love that Christ had when he came became the impartation out of the tomb to his disciples. And as that's been imparted into us, our job now is to spread. It is to get that love, like I always say to you, into our networks. So let's look a little bit closer here because I want you to see what our what the, the, the text uh, really talks about. So when we think about Easter, we got to remember this. Both Easter and Christmas is about love expressed in different ways. It's not about gifts or Easter eggs, and I'm okay with both of those. But it's really these holidays are about love and the way they are expressed. It is my assignment today to bring forward to you days like today 
and cause you to think and embrace them and interact with them in different ways. Okay, so uh, again, we rekindle, we reignite, we reset because love has been brought to us from God. So now is our time to embrace that and reset that. So let's look at it. In our text today, Jesus gives his expectations, okay? So Jesus comes out of the tomb. Um, In John's account, uh, not only a few of them has seen him, but as they have congregated in a house or in a dwelling because they were afraid that the Jews would try to kill them too, Jesus walks through the walls, shows up in the middle of them. And when he does, he says, hey, I want y'all to to chill out. I'm here. Okay. He says, I'm bringing peace. It's all right. Receive it. But then he says to them this major thing. He says, as the father has sent me, I send you. I want to be clear. This is When we read this text, this is Easter Sunday that this is happening. All right. Same day later on in the evening, because, again, Jesus got up the third day very early in the morning and they started going toward the tomb before the sun even came up. This is where we get the the notion or the tradition of sunrise service. So it is now evening. He is coming to his disciples same day and he sets for us, I believe the parameters of how we should be embracing the day. The day happened where he said to them, the way my dad sent me here, I now am going to send you that there is a great exchange happening. And so we don't come to these days just to have big dinners. And, you know, we don't come to these days when it was the time we actually came together and people bought outfits and we got to wear something new for Easter, whatever. I, hey, I have no problem with that. But that's not the thing that we take away. I want you to look cute. I'm cool with that. But what we take away is the fact that there is an expectation from Jesus when he comes out of the tomb. Y'all ready? And in this moment, it ain't worship. It ain't I lift my hands and bow down to you. He says, no, I'm getting ready to exchange some mantles here. I want you to understand the function and the flow that I have of the expectation that I have for you. Y'all with me? All right. So let's look a little closer. So John 3, 16, we know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes should not perish but have everlasting life, right? So for God so loved that he gave his son. So now we find that at the beginning of all of this, Jesus coming, Christmas, and Easter, I feel like they go hand in hand. We just express them differently, okay? When he sends Jesus, he sends Jesus with the motivation of love. Love is the motivating factor. It is the vehicle, if you will, the vehicle in which Jesus came here. For, for those of you uh, seniors and, and getting more senior by the day like me, um, you remember Mork and Mindy? <laughs> and when Mork came to Earth from his planet, he traveled in an egg. So if you will, egg, the love was the egg that Jesus traveled in to earth. It was the motivating factor. And the motivating factor that we have to remember is love. Jesus is saying, he says, as the father sent me, I send you. And he says, what I'm saying to you is I want you to operate like I operate through love. This is why we got to press that reset button on love. Because we need to be operating like him. And here it is. The bottom line is stuff happens. Life happens. It gets stressful. We get overwhelmed and we just lose it sometimes. We don't always operate in love. You know, we're not we're not looking through those lenses. We're not thinking within those parameters or in that mindset, that perspective. 
So we got to press the reset button. And he says, as the father sent me, I sent you and I want you to operate like I operate. Paul picks this up to the church at Ephesus. And this is what he writes. He writes this Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. He says this. I love it. Be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. I like to read this one in the Message Bible. Listen to what it says. (laughs) He writes, watch what God does and then do it. You just cannot step over that. Because if love was the motivating factor that sent our Lord and Savior, the one whom we celebrate today, and Friday we was crying and Wednesday we was giving ashes and all of that. And so today we celebrate because God was motivated to send him. So he says, watch what God does and then do it. God is being motivated by love. Everything we do must be motivated by love. Remember when we read the Revelations 2 text, he says, yeah, you have done this and you've done this and you've done this. And he says, I got one thing against you, though. You've left your first love. The reason why you did it is gone. So the text teaches us that we have to make sure that we watch what God does and then do it. He says, like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. He says, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. You got to love this. Then he goes on to say, observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. <laughs> I ain't got time to even stretch that out the way I feel it right now. He says um, he didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything to us. Love like that. So Paul is saying, imitate God. Okay, imitate God, be motivated by love. But then he says, follow the template of Jesus and operate in love. So you should be motivated by love, and you should operate in love. Now, let's bring that to our marching orders, okay? Look at Matthew chapter 28. This is uh, the account of Matthew after Jesus comes out of the tomb and he meets with his disciples. He says, uh, the text says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, listen, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and make disciples. Listen, he says, because I have the authority both in heaven and in earth, because of that, go. I love it. Go therefore Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, listen, the truth, what he says, so I'm with you. It is my power. But when you go, I'm going with you. So, So you don't have to trip out about the power, because as long as you got me, you got the power. But it's my power. So in order for you to even tap into it, I got to be with you. And he says, I want you to know, I don't plan to leave. If there is a disconnect in your power, it ain't because I left you. And it could be because you left me. (laughs) Vince just said, I ain't going to leave my power. (laughs) You see? So he says, I got the power in heaven and in earth. He has the power that the believer needs in both realms, both in the spirit and in the natural. And so he says, he says, do what I asked you to do. So now here's our marching orders. Here's our work. 
We are to make disciples. That's what we are supposed to do. Make disciples. I really need you to really hear this because uh, I believe that the church has left making disciples. I believe we have in church. I believe we're worshiping. But I don't know if we're making disciples. And the truth of the matter is some of our, um, uh, uh, how do I want to say it? Some of how we do what we've been doing turns people off from being disciples. Okay? Our modaculum. The way we're doing it. And so we got to be careful as to how to do it. Here's Jeremiah's witness. If you're writing, you can write Jeremiah 31 and 3. Here's what he says, and I love it. He says, the Lord has appeared to me of old. He has, uh, the Lord of old has appeared to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Watch this. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Remember, the, 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 the reason we do what we do, the motive, love. The template, Jesus says, do it the way I did it. I did it in love, because of love and in love. So when we take our marching orders, when we make disciples, we have to make sure that we're operating because of love. I'm telling you what I'm telling you. But the way I'm telling you, is with and in love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because Paul teaches us that if we do not have love, we have nothing. Tingling brass, noisy, all this talking, all this shouting, all this music, all this speaking in tongues. But if you do not have love, he says, you have nothing. Jeremiah says, God spoke to him and says, the way I drew you from where you were to where you are is with loving kindness. If Paul tells us that we're supposed to be imitators of God, then what should we be doing? Drawing people with love. Pastor, I thought this is Easter Sunday. It is. I thought he was supposed, he was supposed to be talking about coming out of the tomb. He did. That ain't what he's worried about anymore. What we worried about is what you're going to do. He says, I'm changing the model. I'm leaving y'all in charge. I'm giving you my authority and my power. He says, but I'm giving it to you to make disciples. But many of us want to use his power to be successful. <laughs> many of us want to use his power to make money. And he says, I'm going to give you my power to make disciples. When you do what I do, all this other stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. See, some stuff we worrying about and, 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 and uh, exerting energy over that I don't know if our energies are in the right place. Because at the end of the day, Christ is soon to come. He told his disciples the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Who's going to go work for me? He says, so now when I came out the tomb, I just died for everybody. All right. I laid my love down. That's why I said it was love incarnate. He said at first I came here because the father sent me. He loved. He loved me. I love y'all. He loved y'all. He sent me. Can I keep saying y'all like that back to back? <laughs> so so he says, uh, uh, but when I come out of the tomb with all this power. I'm ready to multiply my efforts. And I need you. So we got to make disciples. You ready? Here it is. Watch this. Peter says this, and I think it's important here. Above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sin. So as we are working now, now, now look. I, I got to tell you, I am so wrestling with this text because I, I really want to unpack it. But not today, not today, because because there's some emphasis because the way we hear that is, is that if we love one another, my love toward you 
will cover your sins. Um, That is a way of looking at it. But when you look at the word cover, it is the word that means to hide or to put away. So could it really mean that when we love one another, the sin in my life gets hidden because of the love that comes out of me? Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? And it makes sense to me because if love is in me and love is the motive and love is the template, then the sin that's in my life should start being minimized and the love of God in me cover that thing up and his love becomes maximized in my life. Love covers. It's just what it does. And listen, throughout humanity, we see uh, in the text of Scripture, through, through, through the text of Scripture, we see that humanity is symbolized through wood. In the garden, when God said, hey, uh, don't touch, you can have everything in here, don't touch this. What did he say? Don't touch this wood. When they did, sin happened. So then Christ had to get on this cross on Galgotha's hill and stretch his body out over wood because wood and humanity When they first came together, sin happened. He says, so now my love has to be stretched out over this sin so that now they can be forgiven for their sins. It is the same text. It's the same thing we see in Christmas. It was the baby Jesus that couldn't get a bed in an inn. So instead, they took a a manger, a trough, where they feed animals that's made of wood and they laid the baby on wood. When he came here, he covered humanity. When he left here, he covered humanity. And then he imparted to us the marching orders that we should be covering humanity. I'm preaching way too hard for Easter. (laughs) So now we got got these marching orders that we should be making Disciples. How do we make disciples? By drawing them with love, teaching them with love, encouraging them to be baptized with love. That's the way it works. Come on, can we we go a little bit deeper? Let's go a little bit deeper here. Jesus says, I want you to make disciples because you are my disciples. Listen, but the people that you're making need to know that you belong to me. How are they going to know, Jesus, that I belong to you? Here's what he said. Last Supper, before he goes to Jerusalem, he sits at the table with them and he says this, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, listen, as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. I want you to think about it. He says, this new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, you love one another. Everybody knows that you're my disciples if you love one another. So he keeps undergirding every line with what needs to happen here, okay? Love one another. It's a new commandment. Since you've been following my words, do this, okay? The way I loved you, do this. Everybody will know. The way we complete this circle is that you love one another. So Jesus comes out of the tomb and he says to his disciples, as the Father, has sent me, so I now send you. Make disciples, teach them, baptize them. Our marching orders today is not just to sing and shout and have a whole bunch of pageantry. The, the truth, truth of it is, I ain't mad that we're not in the, in the sanctuary on a day like today. Because, you know, we'd be trying to have lights, camera, action. As much as we could do to stimulate people and celebrate. But really, this needs to be a contemplative day. How many times you going to celebrate Easter in your life and nothing ever changes when the day is over? 
when he says to you, I got something for you to do. We just want to keep clapping and worshiping because what he has done. He says, hey, when you stop clapping and when you get up from worship, I got some work for you to do. And that's how we celebrate. That we love the way he loved. God so loved, gave. Motivation. Jesus loved. He becomes our template. That we have to do it the way he did it. That's all I got for you today. I'm going to stop tripping out over these major holidays. The question is always going to be, what you going to do? It's Christmas, what you going to do? It's Easter, what you going to do? It's Memorial Day, what you going to do? Because the bottom line is, Jesus is soon to come. And you got friends that you know who are not believers. What you going to do? They've not experienced the love of God, and they got you that close. What you going to do? Got family members that you eat with, laugh with, celebrate with, and they don't know Jesus. What are you going to do? We have our marching orders. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask today that you would forgive us for kind of sitting back and watching but not taking your words to heart. That we are not following through with the great commission with the orders that you have given us father forgive us because we pick and choose out of your word what suits us but we leave that which suits you and we ask for forgiveness today now lord we ask for grace we ask for opportunity to share you with those that we come in contact with. Give us what to say. Allow us to see the moment. And we pray today that you be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, right before we go, I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, in other words, if you've not had an encounter with him that invites him into your life for the forgiveness of your sins, you can do that now. It's really simple here. It's a number on the screen. You can text New Life to that number. We have a team of people waiting to respond to you. We'd like to touch base with you, pray with you, and give you the support you need as you walk this thing out. Also, if you're here today, this will be a great day to commemorate salvation and church membership. If you don't have a church home and you've been coming to Christ Centered and feel like Christ Centered has, has uh, uh, undergirded you in this time, I invite you to be a part of Christ Center Church, make a commitment here. But I love the opportunity to be your pastor and love you and support you and give you the word of God, laugh with you, cry with you, pray for you as you journey from day to day. So if you'd like to be a member here, text connect to this number on the screen and we'll get you plugged in. Listen, I'm going to bless you right after I do that. Hang around because we ain't finished yet. I declare in Jesus' name that you're above only and not beneath, that you are the head and not the tail, that everything your hands touch will prosper, and every place the soles of your feet shall tread upon you shall possess. I declare that on your job, favor waits for you. You are not the problem, but the solution to the problem. I declare money comes to you, but not just money, the wisdom to handle the money that comes your way. Your home is established in peace. Your marriage is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your single life is whole, healthy, and satisfied in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Wholeness, benefit, prosperity, and favor. Now go forth. Be at peace. The God of peace goes with you. I love you. Thank you for logging on today. And remember, he lives. All right, Christ in it, we couldn't let you go on Resurrection Sunday without telling you he lives. Are you ready? I almost want to tell you to stand up in your living room, but I ain't going to do that to you. But put your hands on it. Come on. Come on. Put your hands on it. Yeah. Yeah, the Savior lives today. I know y'all know it.
it so y'all can sing it with me. Here it is, right here. It's time to celebrate the Savior and His Word. Let's shout because we know He lives and we are certain. His love has set us free, our enemies defeated. Let me tell you how it all went down. The news spread so very fast, and people came from miles around. Cause this would be the day Christ would be crucified. Listen, he took his last breath. He hung his head and he died. They took my Savior down from on that rugged cross. And they laid him in a tomb. It seemed all hope was truly lost, but the third day came around and brought the rhythm of life. They rolled the storm. 